right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm honored to be here with all of you leaders, pioneers in the space of Industry 4.0 and where we're going. So if we could play the video. Okay. We'll play the video in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Oh, there it is. Thank you. So what I'd like to share with you today, our view of where we're at relative to this transformation that's happening in Industry 4.0. Share a bit about what products and capabilities we see making this possible. Talk, talk a bit about where customers or manufacturers and utilities providers are really looking for changes in the needs that they have that is driving us into Industry 4.0, and then talk about our commitment and the role we have as we've had in other industries before. So, industrial revolution, we've had many phases of this, and all of you in the audience have been well aware of these. We have seen, well, we have not seen, over, over the last several de uh, centuries, we have, we have had multiple transitions that happen, about every hundred of years. Machines um, come in with coal and steam to help individual operations. Electrification drove a new level of, of mass production at new capabilities. And then, with many of us in the room here, in the second half of the last century, we saw computers in control fundamentally change how goods were produced. But the pace of innovation as we move into the Industry 4.0 is at a new level. And by the way, this pace of innovation isn't just in this, this industry, it's across many industries, and we see this pace quickly rising. What, what the Industry 4.0 um, has, has evolved from is the use of data. Data and machine learning, artificial intelligence is moving us in to this next phase of the Industry 4.0. What's clear is that this, this revolution creates an opportunity for all of us, whether we're producers of goods or whether we're suppliers of the systems. Yes, there are, there's regions in the world, there's companies who, frankly, may still be in eras that are more manual operations or still in Industry 3.0, but many, many companies, many regions are investing to pull us quickly into this fourth uh, phase of the Industrial Revolution. And it's important for all of us to be thinking about how we play in that, how we, we lean in or at, be at risk of being left behind. So there are capabilities in the industry that have driven us to um, allow for this fourth industrial revolution. Two of them are the industrial internet of things and artificial intelligence. For years, we've talked about this concept of the industrial internet of things, where things connect with the data that, is, that comes from those connections, intelligence is brought, and then ultimately we get to autonomous operations. This is synonymous with what is happening with the industrial, industry 4.0 types of activities. The, the volume of data that is being produced is creating challenges relative to the, the bandwidth in the network. 50% of IoT deployments over the next couple of years are becoming network bandwidth constrained. 
And the need for bringing compute closer to the edge is where we're focusing from an Internet of Things um, group perspective, because there is a need for operations closer to the edge closer to the edge in order to analyze this information, act upon it, and drive it back in. This isn't just in the industrial space. We see this in multiple industries. And, and the need for that edge compute and a more IT-like infrastructure where the logical um, operations of data, storage, management of workloads that are more software-defined becomes a, a requirement. And we see this need for this edge compute. Yes, there is economies of scale with cloud computing. We absolutely need cloud kinds of operations. But not all of that information can flow up. And so we see this need for edge compute arising to handle the massive amounts of data that is flowing off of factories and other operations. The other, the other thing that is changing how we will, we will um, I'll, I'll call it, set up and configure factories is 5G. 5G, of course, uh, has arisen out of the ever-increasing mobile broadband needs that we all have with our, the traffic 8x increase over the last couple years. But that, that 5G network is also bringing the capability of an ultra-reliable, low-latency operation where massive numbers of intelligent devices can connect. Now, what does that, what does that mean? So the, 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 the devices that, or excuse me, the factories, where they may not have had Ethernet laid down or they need additional network capabilities. They now will have a wireless, a reliable wireless network to share the information that, that they, they need in order to better communicate between devices, utilizing that data, reacting to it. It also will make the possibility of a more flexible manufacturing operations a reality. Imagine equipment moving to the line versus product moving through the line. These are the kinds of capabilities that we see possible with a 5G network, married with the, the kinds of capabilities that the Internet of Things, with its connectivity network, network um, capabilities closer to the operations. Now, technology, products, solutions are great. Industry 4.0 and the possibilities are, but why is it happening? There are real needs in the industry. When, when we engage manufacturers and utility providers, they express challenges that they face and the things that they're trying to, to solve for. Two of those manufacturers that we've been in, been in conversations with Georgia Pacific, a major paper goods provider as a part of Coke Industries, and ExxonMobil, one of the largest oil and gas providers in the world. ExxonMobil has expressed the challenges that they face with their legacy, their legacy industrial control systems. They're challenged in how they get information, how they um, reconfigure the control logic, as well as the devices themselves. It's a significant uplift for them. The, the, other, the other challenge that they face is they see these innovations that are happening with third-party software providers, and bringing those into their operations is an uplift with the existing infrastructure that they have. Georgia Pacific faces a, a, a challenge in that in their edge infrastructure, they have significant variations of hardware, software, communications protocols, uh, and various operating systems that creates a very complex environment for them to manage. Even if they limit the number of providers that they're working with, they still have these variations. In, in their space, in a time when they're trying to reduce the complexity and the scalability of their of their, their various sites and the systems that are utilized, they have this incredible um, complexity that they have to deal with. 
So what they've expressed to us is the, the need for more modern software development and cloud kind of deployments at the edge with a more open, interoperable, standardized type of, of, of infrastructure there at the edge to help them with the scalability across, across their client sites. So if we have th those capabilities that the industry is looking for, that possibility of the future factory is there. We believe that the future factory is going to be more software defined. Those workloads will be able to move wherever they need to, whether it's at the cloud, whether it's close to the edge where the, the operations need the low latency, and it allows for that flexibility it allows for that self-aware, self-organizing kind of factory to exist. The, the, the factory will ab be able to understand, and the equipment will be able to understand when they're falling out of spec. It'll be able to understand when product quality um, is not late in the cycle, but immediately where adjustments are need to be made. And the factory will make those kinds of adjustments. But the foundation, that foundation re requires a different kind of, of, of system and infrastructure at the operations to do it that is reliable and, of course, real-time, as always. But the connectivity needs to be at a new level. And the technologies we have through the Internet of Things and 5G coming in make it possible where the, connect the connection is not just between the machines, but it's with the product, with knowledge of what's happening, and also with the connected, um, the worker having visibility to what is, what is happening. And finally, of course, security is foundational and the need for that completely end-to-end -end in the operations. So that foundational architecture is where we focus to deliver a solution for, for the industry. So one such company that is really looking at how the, the, the factory must change and evolve and the capabilities is Audi. I'd like to welcome Dr. Henning Lusler, who is the senior, production, senior manager at the Audi Production Labs, to share some of the things that they're doing and where they see the possibilities in the future. Hi, Christine. Thanks. Right, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Yes, thank you. Um, well, it, Christine actually posed me with a big challenge, um, asking me to tell this audience how the future will be. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I can only tell you a vision of how the future may be. What we are working on, 5G, um, you see it here if you walk over the fair. Um, 5G is in everybody's, uh, on everybody's mind. What can this do? And what we need to do, what we need to do is we need to shape the 3GPP standard coming up at the end of this year to be fit for automation. Why? Because automation has different needs than cellular networks. In cellular networks, it's all about or basically, most of it is about download rate. If you go to automation, we all of a sudden have use cases where it's about upload. So you have to reconfigure your network for dealing with upload, high upload rates, giving still the ultra-low latency communication we need in order to drive stuff in real time. That's one point I want to make. The second point I want to make is, um, if we, we've heard a lot about cloud computing today, data centers and all this kind of stuff. Now, if you look at your shop floors um, and you see at all the compute power you have distributed over your shop floor, what's the difference of having this compute power distributed over the shop floor instead of having it in a data center? So why don't we start thinking about the compute power on our shop floor like a data center? Why? Do we, in automation, always think of functions tied to a box instead of this is a function and I deploy it on a compute wherever I need it? Being able to shift it over the layers, have it close to the machine when I need the low latency, have it up in higher layers if that's convenient for us to do. So what we are looking into now is what's been done in the data center structures 
10, 15 years ago. 10, 15 years ago, we had dedicated hardware in the data centers, file storage, compute, and now we have general purpose hardware, and we do software-defined uh, functions in the data centers. Why not do the same thing on the shop floor? Why not go the same route for automation on shop floor, and by that really change the way we, have, we are doing automation right now? Thank you. Thank you. What Dr. Lucer shared is very similar to what we hear from many different manufacturers of what they're looking for. They're looking for those IT types of capabilities brought into the operations. In order to that achieve that, we have to think differently. It's not just about the technology bringing that open, virtualized, software-defined type of infrastructure that we've seen evolve in many different industries, but it's also thinking about how the people, how the processes evolve. With this type of change, the operating world, the factory, the factory worker, the operation manager, the overall worldwide manufacturing exec, they have to be thinking differently about how they set up, utilize information, how they correlate different data sets in new ways. So that fundamental uh, change that is, evol that is evolving within, with the technology, with the applications of, of a lot of the, the, the capabilities that we've had in the other industries, we need that same kind of capabilities closer to the operations of a factory or even utilities as well. We also will see a different need for a new level of data scientists able to operate on the information that becomes available. Yes, we're going to have capabilities with machine learning built into the systems and those, those automation, but we're going to need a new, new roles, new capabilities within the factory operations utilizing the information that it's on hand. There are also, with the advent of Industry 4.0 and incredible new opportunities from a business perspective, we're going to see the, the possibilities of new business models presented, capacities available, making it visible to somebody who needs the, the, small, the small runs, et cetera, networks of factories sharing what is available. New business models like that will, will evolve and present themselves um, across the industry. We believe Industry 4.0 is, is in full, full motion here. We are on the journey with the possibilities of it. It is where the digital and the physical world are, are coming to, environments are coming together and making it possible to produce goods in new ways. The, with the emergence of the Internet of Things and AI, the factories are going to be more cloud-connected, data-centric, where it's not just about the machines that are automated, but it's about the, the capabilities of making our um, factories more agile and autonomous in their production. And with, with information that is at, on hand, it will present massive opportunities for us to really transform how this industry, um, how this industry um, performs, having us all thinking bigger and differently. Intel's leadership with technology and innovation, we're going to continue to partner in the industry. We're going to continue to innovate, working with others to drive the standards and the capabilities that are needed to bring the, the the, the compute to the edge, and the capabilities that are needed for the factory. And we will actively participate in the, the community here in industry, you know, industry events and consortiums, et cetera, to make that possible. We are excited to be a part of this transformation. It is one of those once-in-a-hundred-year kind of opportunity, and we're excited to see this change. I would love for you to join us in our booth to see some of the, data, the, the solutions that we have available from our ecosystem of partners, providing 
providing these data-centric kinds of capabilities. And I thank you for your time today.